Hello and welcome to a new adventure and today we're continuing our journey along the Leeds New Line. Now the weather is so much better today than it was in the last, se the last section that we did. It was really miserable and gloomy but today the sun is shining so we're really happy to be out and walking. But anyway, shall we crack on and get moving along the line? But just before we do, we've got Richie with us again. Now the old Liversidge Spen station that we did in the last video, it's just down there on my left, probably a quarter of a mile that way. There was a bridge right here at this spot. It went over the railway and down. Now you can see the lane just there behind. That was the lane that went over the bridge. So this spot right here used to be a children's playground back in the day. And the railway would have been roughly where that fence is on the left there. And what I'm gonna do is fade a picture in now so you can see that. And you'll also see on this picture, the bridge that I was just talking about across the line, just behind the park there. And you can see the line up on the left behind the fence. And then we'll zoom back out to today's view. So we've reached a section just outside Cleck Eaton and it's called Royds Park. Now the track bed is directly behind me. We're on the track bed now. So it would have come towards us roughly where them trees are straight ahead and then continued straight on but something fascinating ahead here is that there's a now a miniature railway built on the former track bed a double level miniature railway as well look at that <laughs> yeah how good is that got a nice little bridge here across the line not what we're used to seeing no abutments on this one but a nice little uh, section here which I presume would have been a shed at one point where they can uh, store the engines and things yeah nice little miniature railway never seen it open Richie says and he lives around here or he did so we just had to make a little detour now the uh, line runs through private land now down here so we've had to come up the hill to walk and make our way around it now I don't know if you can see over there but you can also see an embankment there now that is the LMY line as it makes its way into Cleckheaton, just on our right over there. So like I said in the previous video, we've got two lines here running through all these towns in this valley, both no longer here, both gone now. So we just managed to pick up the track bed again. We did have to do a bit of a detour up the hill at the back, but as you can see right in front of us, we have an embankment and you can see it clear as day. As it heads towards Spen, is it Spen Lane, Rich? Yeah, Spen Lane ahead and onwards into Cleck Eaton. And this is where it meets Spen Lane, which is just down there. And you can see we've got, and I'm gonna say it, we've got abutments left of a bridge. And directly opposite there, on the other side, was the Cleck Eaton Spen station. And there's the uh, abutment on the other side. But you can see again, just in them trees there, we've got the uh, Iconic railings that Richie were mentioning before, but they're uh, a bit worse for wear on that side. Right, so I've got a picture to show you, which is taken in the 60s, we think. And I'm gonna fade it in for you now of the Gerda Bridge across Spen Lane, or Spen Bank Bridge, as it was known. So we've made it up onto the embankment at the side of the bridge. And there's lots of ballast down here and a couple of, uh, Strange little finds over there. Bits of metal, all rusted. So there's the bridge abutment, as you can see. We've got some bits of bricks and things down here. And the old uh, grey blue engineering brick. So Richie's just made a find on the embankment. There, you can just see it in his hand. Some kind of, did you say for a telegraph pole, Richie? Yeah, well, I think it's the uh, ringing wire. You can, alter, you can alter that, alter the tension. The tension on the wire for the telegraph pole. Possibly. Possibly. So we're back on Spen Lane. And this here is the original entrance or access road into the station. So you had Cleckie and Spen Station just down there, which is where we're heading right now. Now Richie says there was two access roads to this station. There's this one, and then the other one on the other side is something a bit special. Right, so what we're looking at now is the entire site of the station and unfortunately there isn't anything left of the station itself because it's now a, a works yard but the platforms of the station would have been right in the middle here somewhere the tracks coming through from left to right 
And that building you can just see in the distance there with the new roof on it, that is the original goods shed that used to be there on the other side of the station. So that's the only thing that's remaining here. And the tracks would have been right in front of us now coming directly towards us. And then on that way towards now what is a, a big warehouse of some sort. But what we're making our way down here to look at is the second access road to the station. Now right to our left here is a huge valley and it makes you may think how the hell did they get a road to the station which is right on the embankment or the side of the valley here. Well I'll tell you what they did they went and built a bloody great big viaduct right across the valley and the uh, river down there is that a river? also they could get cars across or vehicles across the bridge here to access the station which was right up there anyway here's a nice side shot of the viaduct but shall we go one better than that shall we get the drone up and have a nice panoramic of this viaduct i think we should it's worthy of that it's beautiful Right, so we've made our way down to have a look underneath the viaduct. Now, if I haven't mentioned it already, this is known as the Man Dam Viaduct. And it's named that because there is actually a body of water just there, and that is called the Man Dam. So, hence the name for the viaduct. There's also a stream or a river just the other side down there in a the little uh, cutting called the River Spen, which is the same one that ran underneath the viaduct at Heckmanwijk that we covered. Now, also worth mentioning, when I did the Heckman White Viaduct, this is a similar construction, very, very similar in appearance. That similar that when I was looking for pictures of the Heckman White one, I was getting pictures of this and thinking that was it. But it's very, very similar. So you can kind of get the idea of what that would have looked like from this alone. So you've got the uh, vaulted undercarriage there from the bridge. And then you've got these uh, iron pillars holding it down to some brick pillars right across the uh, water there. But it's, uh, I'd probably say 80 feet high, 75, 80 feet. It's not massive in terms of a viaduct, but you can walk across it. So today, if you fancy a nice stroll across the top, you can make your way across there. Like I say, this was originally built as an access road for the station just up there, which is hard to believe because what a big deal to make just for an access road. There were obviously something important as to why they needed to do this. But anyway, if I haven't mentioned this is now a listed structure. I'm not sure what status. Is it grade two, maybe? Uh, not sure. Probably grade two listed. We haven't checked it out. I'll, I'll put it down below what it is. But as you can see, there's some scaffolding just behind me over there. So they're currently doing some work on the bridge, which is nice to see. But it is listed, so it isn't going anywhere soon. So we've just headed down the side of the viaduct, just where the station site was. And we've just spotted this on the floor. A lot of uh, bricks and rubble down here. Concrete, stone, bricks. Looks like a bit of a dumping ground for the uh, landowner up here. But that is definitely what appears to be some kind of a gatepost of some sort. Yorkshire stone with a rusty hinge on it. So we're heading away from the station now and further up the track towards the Gomesal Tunnel. Just up there is a, a warehouse currently. Now that used to be all the sidings just after the station here. There's also, we believe, maybe a good shed up here as well. But Richie's just said as well, apparently Winston Churchill spent a night on a train parked in them sidings back in the 50s. Now, I've never seen that before. Look how strange that tree is. All its roots are 
above ground, which is very weird. Looks like something out of a Harry Potter film, as Richie just said. So we're trying to make our way up to the embankment up here to get back on the track bed. And we've just found this right at the bottom. Bit of uh, engineering brick again, but it's a nice curved arch all around here. And you can see the other side just there. There's a brick pillar there. This was definitely some kind of an underpass. So I've just checked the maps now, and it was. There was basically uh, a footpath of some sort. I mean, there's one still here today. But there was a footpath that came under here. All right, so we're making our way it's down the track bed still. This is the embankment that we're currently on. And straight behind the camera now, it continues towards the tunnel. And just to our right over here, it would have been a signal box. Nothing left today. It's all been re-landscaped and leveled out. But what we're gonna do is head up and round and try get as close to the tunnel as we possibly can. Now the Gomisal tunnel is known for being really difficult to get to. So we've reached what is known as Cliff Lane. And as you can see, the railway would have crossed underneath here. As it snakes its way through the valley, it would have curved off around there and towards the tunnel, which is just over there somewhere. But you can see here, we've got one end of an abutment on this side and another end over there on the corner. This side is completely gone, as you can see. Nothing left here. Now we've got to head through this field past these, uh, look like Highland cows, don't they? Probably called Morag. <laughs> Got big uh, horns on them. Now at this point, you can clearly see where the track level is here. And I've made a makeshift concrete bridge there, which I think is a modern installation, but the track obviously headed on that way and curved right. Now we're making our way down here on a public footpath. and We're hopefully gonna join it further down. So the uh, bridge I just mentioned, the concrete one, is actually across an existing structure. They've obviously removed the girder section and somebody's built a brand new one above it just to bridge it for access, which is great. But the wall is still intact on this side. So we walked across the embankment that you saw, made it down towards the cutting to the tunnel. Now the tunnel cutting has actually been filled in quite a lot, a lot of landfill around here. And then just before you get to the tunnel, it drops away again. So I'm going to pan you around now. So what you're seeing on here is the landfill. And if I pan you around this way, you can see there it drops away again, ready for the tunnel portal right ahead there. So this tunnel was built to basically bypass Gomisol altogether. So it heads underneath Gomisol. We will show you the other side if we can get to it. You can definitely see all the landfill up there. This is the original depth here where Richie is now. And there's what appears to be some kind of strange brick structure with stairs inside so let's check this out 